cases. We're moving on to VA 2023-10. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This one is a rezoning request by Cole Livingston. Uh, we 31.26 acres for the community commercial CC and multifamily residential, which is RM. Um, subject property in its total is more than 75 acres. When you look at the zoning map on the screen and in your packet, um, the parcel of land is that existing CC area that you see outlined, plus the RM property to the lower right of it and the connecting CC zoning area out to Interpremer Road. This is an unusual shape piece of property. It goes back to the Brayland estate when it was annexed 30 some years ago um, in an auction that occurred afterwards when the property was bought. It has a little bit of a zoning history to it. Um, it was zoned differently, but CC and RM, um, there was a proposal many years ago to develop it as commercial on the west, apartments behind it that never materialized. It has changed hands. The applicant now is looking at doing a single family residential subdivision throughout, at least the majority of the property. Um, technically, CC zoning and RM zoning each allow single family homes at the applicant's proposed density, which is an R10 density, by the way. However, it was at staff's request that the CC zoning is particularly awkward be running through the middle of a single family neighborhood. RM zoning allows residential in all forms of density, from a single family duplex up to multifamily. And so I have requested that the applicant seek the rezoning of the commercial part to match the existing RM part. So in your packet, you have the zoning map, the character area is community activity center. This character area is why the applicant is not seeking R10 zoning. It is not allowed, but it is simply not dense enough for that area, hence the RM. Um, aerial imagery, as you can see, there is a very little around there other than the new Harvest Methodist Church, um, the uh, girls' home to the north of that, and a couple commercial developments along the perimeter. And then in the lower left part of the screen, you see part of the new Valdosta High School. This is very similar to a request a few months ago when we had a property to the west of here down East Park Avenue um, that was also split zone, it was R15 and RP. They rezoned it to RM, um, also because of the character area. Um, the only difference is that particular subdivision is proposed for single family homes at R6 uh, density, which is allowed in RM zone. Survey of the property, this is from back when it was under the Brayland estate at their auction. There are some wetlands shown here from many years ago. Um, they will need to be re-evaluated, perhaps re-surveyed. Uh, um, at the moment, it's my understanding that some of these are now non-jurisdictional wetlands, um, but along the south property line, they are jurisdictional. That is something that will be looked at again when it comes time for subdivision review of the property. So in your packet, you have these maps. You also have a conceptual lot layout. And to put this in perspective for you, this layout shows more than 200 single-family lots. Uh, it would be the largest new single-family subdivision we've had in the city in a very long time. One footnote is the blue area that's shown here is depicted as proposed single-family lots. However, that is proposed to keep its CC zoning, at least for now. This is basically the applicant holding their options open, that if they get a commercial user for this frontage along Interprimer Road, then the commercial zone is in place. If that does not happen, then the default plan is to simply add more single family lots, probably as you see it shown here. So with all of that, similar to the previous rezoning case on that other property, staff finds it consistent with the comprehensive plan. It stands for exercise of zoning power, which are there in your packet, and we're recommending approval of the rezoning from CC to R. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Martin at this point? Yes, sir. I'm just curious, uh, on Perimeter Road, there's, on that, on the, on the eastern side, there's no city or county water and sewer? At the moment, no. There are plans to extend those services there, but it is not something that's going to happen quickly. 
Um, the applicant's engineer has already been in communication with the city engineering department and the city utilities department um, to coordinate the extension of utilities out to this area. Um, as you can imagine, coming from a half mile or more to the west, um, whatever gets extended has the potential to service multiple properties. So the design in terms of the big picture becomes important and that's where those discussions are headed. So yes, there is plan to extend water and sewer and the R10 density is going to be required in the city. Um, it's a matter of time. Okay. And just a question on that, you may or may have noticed the blue area that may or may have seen, is that currently owned by that? Correct, it's all part of the 75 acre parcel. On the zoning map, it's that CC area that goes out to perimeter. Yes. The proposal is simply to leave it CC for now and see what happens. Um, as you can imagine, with the lack of development at the moment in this area, we're a little bit ahead of the game. Um, and the, the crystal balls are not polished quite enough yet. Uh, when did you post the sign about the uh, brief application here? When did you post it? These had to be done 15 days before now. It was, it was done on, actually on Saturday, two calls? weeks ago. How many calls you made? For this one, we've had one that I'm aware of. And it's from a member of the Methodist Church. Okay. So uh, the one is, I'm just curious because you've you had it out there noticing only one citizen has called to find out about something. Correct. Like Even though it's, it's been tough publicly advertised, only one person has called. Correct. Okay. I'm just curious. I, I've had several from people living out there that say, Y'all cannot pass this low-income housing, this low-income apartment complex on Now, it's curious to me that we talk about this. Nobody's called to find out, even though it's publicly, it's out there. The comments from the lady who called, I think, and I says yes. she was a I member of the church. I get she was concerned about apartments going in. Um, the interesting thing is you look at the current zoning. It's zoned for apartments now. Yeah, I get it. 100% I get it. I'm just curious. How many people call it? The only one I'm aware of is the one. Go ahead, Commissioner Russ. Matt, are, are we saying these are going to be serviced by septic tank? No. No. It's just they're getting approved. In Water and sewer proposed. The services aren't there yet. Okay. Um, and that becomes a subdivision review okay. issue. Okay. Because I was going to say that's why I said it. Yes. <laughs> Which is why the city wanted it a lot. Yeah. Any other questions for Mr. Mark? Then we will enter the public hearing portion of this application. Is there anyone here this evening that would like to speak in favor? I remember you, Matt. Don't worry. Please state your name and address for the record. I'm Larry Sanders. I live at 6490 River Run, Naylor, Georgia. I'm Cole Livingston. 1357, Peterville Road, Lakewood. In short, uh, as, as Matt pointed out, uh, I'm, I'm not an engineer on the property, but Aero Engineering here in Bible School. Uh, Matt's done a great job of explaining the, the situation. Uh, currently, we could build, uh, we could develop the project, the project just as it sits, as it's zoned currently. Uh, Matt made a request that we clean up a Next on issue, and uh, we we're glad to try and help. We'll want to work with the city you know, as best we can to be in compliance with, with all the rules. Uh, Matt, you're, you probably got it committed to memory, but uh, I believe we could have done the 6,000 square foot lots. You we're, still can. Yeah, I, but <laughs> I, I wanted to point out that that's not what, what we're trying to do. The 10,000 square foot lot is similar to what's being built in, you know. Uh, some of the phases of growth points and you know most of the other subdivisions that are currently being developed uh, you can build a you know you can build a very good looking house uh, on a 10,000 square foot lot and uh, you know we're we're finally developing an area that uh, that's set dormant for years and uh, we're excited to be here uh, Cole has anything to say Cole's uh, known Cole and his family uh, since he was a since he was a small child, uh, his, his father was a home builder and has been, uh, I don't know, for the last 30, 30 plus years. Uh, Cole grew up in the business, Cole, Cole built a fine house, and uh, I decided to, decided to be helping. And 
we'll do a, we'll do a good looking vote. But, uh, don't want to have a, as opposed to just conventional detention, uh, we're planning on using, uh, we're planning on building a wet pond, so we've got a, a side amenity uh, instead of just a, just a detention pond that will become, become part of the development. Uh, as, in addition, uh, there's a community center plan that the, that the neighborhood will have access to and a, and a swimming pool. Preliminary plan for right now, so we're not building a lot of new development, and uh, I think the city will be very proud of, of, of what we're doing. Uh, we're working with uh, working with the utilities department and the engineering department. Any help we can get on getting the utilities extended would be greatly appreciated. Uh, we're we're going to be bearing. Uh, we're either going to have to sit on our hands uh, and wait for you guys to come to us, or my clients going to have to. Spend a lot of money that's on a certain area that you know has sat out for many years. Uh, the city might also can stand the additional houses. I think there's still a, I think there's still a need for additional houses, uh, and obviously this is located you know right by the Austin High School. So uh, any questions you have, I'll be glad to field or cold to field. But that's that's it in a nutshell. Thank you, sir. Any questions for the gentleman, commissioners? What, <clears throat> what size house are you planning on building at approximate price point? Well, we're going to be between fifteen fifty to seventeen fifty heated, anywhere from two twenty nine nine to two sixty nine nine. 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 Two sixty around 229 to 
Did you get the address on this one? I should fill out a form. Okay. Yes, thank you. Where is your subdivision in relation to Okay, this so I don't know North South East and Western here unless well, it's, 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 it's going towards Lake It's going towards Lake I think it's in the very upper right corner yes, of the stream. Yes. There's like 119 homes there, I think. Is it cotton? Cotton made from uh, it's cotton it's with subdivision. Right. I'm looking at the street. Uh, it's outside the city limits, but it, on this map, it's also the upper right corner. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to get the yeah. juxtaposition where you live. Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a big concern for all of us. Okay. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming to see me. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else here this evening that would like to speak in opposition to this application? Seeing no one, that will close the public hearing portion on this matter. Any further comments from the commissioners? I have a question. Yes, sir. Under current zoning, they could put in 1,350 apartments. Well, I haven't done the math, but possibly 75 acres times 18 units per acre, just an RM. Um, higher density now in the CC portion without limit. So this is absolutely a downfall. Very much so. In terms of what they're proposing, of course, um, it's matching zoning that's already on the property for half of it and greatly reducing the zoning on the other half. And one other comment, just it really is not bearing on this case. But the applicant's proposal for our 10 density for a subdivision, particularly one of this magnitude, um, we have not seen a proposal for our 10 zoning and new zoning. If you remember all the zoning cases we've had, the last one was 14 years ago. Every subdivision we've had for a zoning change has been for R6 density or multifamily. This is the first new R10 one. Um, or anything like that, I think, since Knight's Landing, which was R15 back in 2009. So, uh, from a staff perspective, I find the proposal refreshing. No further questions for staff? Then I will entertain a motion on this matter. Mr. Chair. Yes, Commissioner Watts. Uh, on this uh, zoning request, VA 2023-10, um, this rezoning from community community commercial to uh, multi-family residential, as we've heard, is in fact already given consideration to the existing property owners nearby. As uh, Mr. Miller just stated, we, the builder that could go out right now and put 1,350 apartments on this property as it, as it is currently zoned. They also looked at 6,000 square foot lots and decided to put 10,000 square foot lots instead. So I think they've given a lot of consideration to uh, having a better quality development than other people who had this option with this property would have done. Uh, so also this has gone uh, through review and found to be consistent with the comprehensive plan and recommended for approval, so therefore I would like to recommend that we recommend approval on this result. Thank you. We have a recommendation of approval by Commissioner Wiles. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. And a second by Commissioner Bates. All those in favor of the motion to approve? 